Hi, I'm Retro Skelly. Welcome back to the channel where we are doing another game comparison. This is where we take a classic game and look at the original release and some of the systems it was ported to. So let's not delay any further and get in today's video where we are looking at this week's game, Joust. Joust was released in 1982 and developed by Williams Electronics, led by John Newcomer. After the success of both Asteroids and Defender, John didn't want to emulate the already popular space theme, so created a list of things that could fly, including machines, animals, and fictional characters. After evaluating each one, and being heavily influenced by the film Flash Gordon, Newcomer settled on birds, picking an ostrich for player one, a stork for player two, and buzzards for the enemies. Joust is an action game where you assume control of your knight riding the previously mentioned ostrich. When a player's knight and an enemy collide, the one whose lance is higher wins. If the lances are at the same height, the two knights rebound from the collision. Each defeated enemy turns into an egg, which can be picked up for bonus points. The wave ends when all enemy knights have been defeated and their eggs picked up or destroyed. Joust arrived at the height of the golden age of arcade games and swept players off their feet. It presented a novel gameplay in a novel setting that captured the imagination. The game features amplified mono sound and raster graphics, but with its brightly coloured sprites and fast gameplay, it was well received by both players and critics alike. William shipped 26,000 units of Joust, despite being initially concerned the game would be unsuccessful. Video game magazine Electronic Games described Joust as being tremendously popular, and in a reader's poll, Joust came runner-up for most popular coin-op video game in August 1983. In the same year, Joust also topped the Playmeter Arcade charts and the Replay Upright Arcade Cabinet charts. Joust was inevitably ported to multiple systems. Let's have a quick look at some of these now. In 1983, Atari released Joust on their home consoles. Obviously, the Atari 2600 is lacking the graphical quality you get in the arcade, but it still captures the essence of the original. However, the 2600 version does slightly differ from the arcade, as the platforms change from level to level. The sound effects are what you expect from the 2600, slightly harsh with that rasp. On the Atari 5200, you get the obvious improvement on both graphics and sound effects, making it closer to the arcade version. The controls are also a lot smoother than the 2600, making this port is far more playable and one of my favourites. The ports for the 7800 and the Atari 8-bit family are almost identical. Again, an obvious improvement on the 2600 and a lot closer to the arcade version. But for me, they both just fall short of the 5200, which still seems to have the perfect balance of graphics, sound and controls. Of course, this could be my bias of owning a 5200 back in the day. Atari used the brand name of AtariSoft to publish games for non-Atari systems. Developed in 1983, both the Apple II and IBM PC versions are two of the worst graphically, and to be honest, the sound effects aren't much better. I have a huge amount of nostalgia for the PC, as this is the system I played the most, but unfortunately I have to say these are the two worst ports of Joust I've seen. These versions almost feel like Atari couldn't be bothered to put in any effort as they weren't for their systems. Released in 1985, Joust on the Atari ST is very impressive graphically and in my opinion the closest to the arcade version. However, we are still getting the basic bleeps for sound effects and one can't help feel that with the capabilities of the Atari ST, when it comes to sound, some in-game music would have been a welcome addition. In 1988, Joust was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System programmed by Satoru Iwata. While essentially there is nothing wrong with the port, as it plays fine, I just find the whole look and feel slightly disappointing considering it was released a whole five years later than its Atari counterparts. Now every list I've seen on the internet states that Joust was released on the Apple Macintosh, however I've really struggled to find it. The only thing I have managed to find is a game called Glyphor, written by John Calhoun, pictured here. Glyphor was developed and distributed by Soft Dorothy Software in 1990, and while the gameplay is the same as other versions of Joust, this is very much a clone due to the adopted Egyptian theme. Let me know in the comments below if you know of other versions of Joust on the Apple Macintosh. 
onto a handheld version of Joust Now and the Atari Lynx. I didn't know what to expect for this port, but I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. This is a great version with great graphics and sound. It also supports comms link for that two-player action. <laughs> We've covered the Apple II and IBM PC, but Atarisoft also developed Joust for the BBC Micro, ColecoVision, Commodore 64, Intellivision, VIC-20 and TI-99, but these were never released. However, some years later, the program files were discovered, and you can now find versions of Joust for the BBC Micro, ColecoVision and Commodore 64 online. Joust can now be found on many consoles either as a standalone game or as part of classic arcade game sets. The fact the game continues to be developed for systems over 20 years after the original release proves how popular Joust has been over the years. A little bonus for you now and a quick look where Joust has been parodied in popular culture. Joust can be found in TV shows and computer games and it also features prominently in the book Ready Player One. Let's take a quick look at some of these now. Here's your PS3! Keep watching Adult Swim for our next big contest. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Man, I'm telling you, something about this guy does not add up. And I'd appreciate your help. It Jer Jerry? What's wrong with you, dude? Are you telling me you actually like this dude? Now. Shang Tsung wins. Friendship. Friendship? Again? Joust is another one of my favorite uh, classic arcade games, Williams Electronics, where you could battle one of your friends, and I remember lots of like heated Joust battles with my friends growing up, and so I wove that into the story as well. Inside the first gate, at the end of a Tomb of Horrors recreation, uh, the main character, Parzival, has to play a game of Joust against a Sararak, which is a Dungeons and Dragons villain, and defeat him, and that's part of the first challenge in the book. Well, there you go, guys. That's it for this video. Please leave your comments below. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the thumbs up to like the video, and please also consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.